Thank you, choir. They are mighty. Small in number, but mighty in voice. The scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. If you'd like to follow along in your pew Bible, it's on page 4 of the New Testament. Salt and light, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. When you're a pastor, you're friends with a lot of other pastors connected on social media. Everyone was talking about this Sunday, those who follow the lectionary anyway. One pastor said, yes, this is the Sunday where I get to remind God's people to get salty and lit. I thought, I hope you don't preach that. <laughs> but it is the time for us to think about what it means to be salty in the name of God. What it means to shine God's light. It's Salt and Light Sunday in the lectionary. It comes around every three years, and I'm so glad it's here. We use the term salty as maybe an insult, right? Someone's salty with you. They're uh, rubbing you the wrong way. My daughter sometimes uses idioms the wrong way. She's five, and sometimes when she hugs Andrew before work, and if he hasn't shaved, he says, ooh, you're spicy, Daddy. <laughs> but salt and light, they're essential. They're basic, and they're essential. On Monday, it snowed just a little bit, and as we were getting everyone out the door, my husband said, oh, it's, it's going to be slippery out there. It's bad. Let me load the car. He went out with the backpacks and came back in. He said, oh, it is really slippery, Sarah. I don't want you to go out there. I knew it was slippery, and it was still slippery. You just stay here. I'll pull the car around. And he goes back out with my lunch, and I hear this, bam! His whole body wasn't even prepared, carrying my lunch, which happened to be spaghetti. So just, at first, I thought, we have a real disaster, you know, but it was just my lunch. He fell because we didn't use salt. Salt is essential, and I was reminded of that this very week. Salt and light, basic and needed what you are called to be for the grace of God, that's the lesson for today. We're hearing about it in the Gospel of Matthew. The scripture is from the Sermon on the Mount. 
There's four weeks here in the lectionary where we go through the Sermon on the Mount, which is the longest teaching in the Gospel of Matthew, the first teaching in the Gospels, Jesus' first message. Stretches for two chapters from five to seven in the Gospel. We heard a little bit of it last week, the Beatitudes, and today we're hearing more. Now, if you remember the scene from this gospel, Jesus has already been baptized. He's already been out in the wilderness and tempted. He's already prayed. He's been calling his disciples, and now he's preaching. And he's preaching to a crowd, but it's not just any crowd. We learn at the beginning that it's crowds of people who are sick, who are disabled, who are blind, who are hurting. These are people who are desperate for good news, and they're gathering around him in a big crowd. So he's preaching to these people who are hurting and who are wounded. And he surprises them with the gospel. He surprises them with this Sermon on the Mount. We remember from last week, he's starting to turn assumptions on their head, saying that those who are poor in spirit will be lifted up. Those who are hungry and those who thirst, all will be fed and quenched and blessed. Can you imagine if you were someone who was sick or outcast or untouchable or hurting to hear a message like this? And today the blessings continue. He says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Now, a lot of times in churches and with religious people, we get it wrong. We think if you do this and this and this and this, you will be blessed. We think of blessings and love from God as conditional. If you do this and this and this and this, you'll be blessed. But this is the opposite. The Sermon on the Mount starts by saying, you are blessed. And so go serve the world. You already are blessed. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Knowing that, go bless the world in my name. Jesus uses salt and light. And when you think about salt and light, first salt was a commodity, especially in biblical times. New parents would rub their babies with salt to protect them. They believed if a baby's body was covered in the commodity of salt, their baby would survive. Salt is used to preserve food, to season, to flavor, Salt is used to melt ice, and dang, we really need to pay attention to that. A little bit of salt goes a long way, just a little bit, and it changes everything around it. The Latin root of salary, your earnings, is salt. To earn enough to buy your salt. It's a needed commodity, a revered commodity. A little bit goes a long way, and also it's basic. And you are the salt of the earth. And light. Light, a little bit, a little light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never overcome it. God started the creation of the world with light, hovering over that dark void and saying, whispering, Let there be light, and there was light. The beginnings of the world, made in light. But the thing about salt and the thing about light is that neither one is good just on its own. I did not see a single kid eat their salt like that, right? I can see it on the carpet, but nobody did that. Salt's not really good on its own. It's used in partnership with ice, with food to preserve, to protect, to melt, to season, to flavor. And light, if a light is shining in a void, is anyone there to see it? We, we only know light because of what it illuminates, what it affects, what it shines on. And so when we hear this Sermon on the Mount where Jesus is telling his people, you are blessed, you are the very essence of the world, You are made up of the very thing that started creation. You are made up of the very commodity that protects and preserves seasons, flavors, and melts. But it doesn't end there. Take those blessings and go out into the world. This is a commissioning. It's a blessing and ascending of God's people. 
knowing that you're light, knowing that you're salt of the earth, go and bless others. Go and season the world with the grace and forgiveness I taught you. Go and melt the hearts of those who doubt, of those who are hardened, of those who are angry. Go and illuminate a path for those who are lost or those who are broken. Turn on the lights. Be the salt of the earth. Bless the people around you. When Jesus began his ministry, we talked about this last week, he began it by teaching a crowd. This is heard as a collective message. It's a message about doing the work of collaboration, of community building, of joining together with others around you who are the salt of the earth, who are the light of the world. Because salt and light by themselves do little. This is Jesus' reminder that the beginnings of his ministry, the God of all creation, who could have affected the world and changed the world, saved the world and transformed the world in any way, decided to do it with human beings, one by one by one, drawn together into the body of Christ, collectively brought together, not seeking uniformity, but unity anyway. And so at Community Christian Church, when we think about what we're called to do, we remember that it's collective and collaborative. It's about being God's community together. It's about loving one another well, forgiving one another, starting relationship and continuing in relationship with one another, of being God's whole body here so that we can bless the world. Amen.